I can also start acknowledging that some of my own beliefs about myself, if I speak the truth all the time, everyone else around me is not going to like me. That's one belief. It's a false belief, but it might be a belief we have inside of ourselves, you see? And so that belief could be being triggered. So the key is to ask yourself how, with everything that comes at you, what is this reflecting back at me about how I see myself? And there's always the primary grief is always about yourself. Do you follow me? That's usually the primary grief. Like why am I grieving that I got abused by my father? Because it changed how I see myself. Right? It distorts how I see myself. Why am I grieving because my partner left me? Because it changed how I viewed myself. Because when a partner leaves me, I now feel that no man's ever going to want me anymore or no woman's ever going to want me anymore. That's how I see myself. And I'm grieving about that. So how do I see myself is a core part of your emotional processing. So if you're tempted to get into anger with regard to emotions, it's because you don't want to see how you actually see yourself. You don't want to see the truth about how you treat yourself in these particular interactions. And when that happens, what we finish up doing is living in the fear or the terror and then, of course, wanting to get away from that fear or terror by using all sorts of techniques. Total suppression gets us into depression. Total, total addictive behaviour gets us into this anger, anger happy, anger happy, anger happy type cycle that many of us can get into quite easily where I'm happy as long as everything around me is working nice and smooth and as soon as something goes wrong, one thing goes wrong, I am now angry. Right? And then when that one thing pans out and fixes itself, I'm now happy. Right? Now, in the end, this won't happen to you. Things will go wrong in your life and you'll remain happy. Right? But you can only do that by getting through that emotion and into the core emotion of why you're trying to control the environment. And the way, reason why we can try to control our environment always eventually gets back to how I'm seeing myself. Now, that, that's the real core issue for most of us to face, how, how I see myself. Now, when a person, in, in Katrina's example, a person comes and attacks her, what's happening is this is connecting with some old stuff inside of you about how a man sees you and so therefore how a man, how you see yourself when you're with the man. Does that make sense? And that's what it's really connecting to and that's the thing that needs to be released. When that's released, no matter whether the man is angry or not, you will still feel peace within you. And you'll be able to then, in that particular space, even stay in an angry situation with peace inside of you. When I say stay in it, I don't mean that you'll stay in it permanently. I mean there's all sorts of situations that will come up in your life where you could choose anger. And instead, because this emotion is now gone from you, you would, you'll be in peace in that situation. You won't want to decide to stay in it permanently, of course. So if someone's permanently projecting rage at you, you'd say, well, now you're just wasting my time. Because <laughs> it is a waste of, some, of your time and theirs for you to just try to defend anger all the time. So after a while, you won't want to attract those kind of people anymore and you won't feel attracted to them. And in fact, they won't even be attracted to your life very much at all. But if you, if you see that it's all related to how I see myself then it will help you a lot to actually process through the emotion. And that's what's helped me so much with all of my stuff, is that every single time I get a projection from others, I'm going, all right, this is how I see myself. There's something in how I see myself here. And that's why very few of you ever feel a projection coming back from me, no matter how you treat me. Because I'm always trying to own how I feel about myself here. Does that make sense? And when you can get into the practice of doing that, which is actually a practice of humility in the end, isn't it? When you can get into that practice and it becomes a part of your being, you'll find you'll rarely, if ever, get into anger and you'll always be seeing, all right, there's some grief in here about how I feel about me. Or 
And by the way, if there's anger in you about how you feel about you, that's not the same as grief in you about how you feel about you. So many of us have a temptation to get into anger with ourselves. And if you have a temptation to get into anger with yourself, you are still denying a fear about yourself and therefore also still suppressing the grief about yourself. Does that make sense? So if, if I'm finding I'm getting angry with myself or another person, then in that moment I am creating a self-deception in order to avoid the true feeling, the fear-based feeling that's covering the core emotion. Now every time you feel drawn into defending yourself, that is an excellent time to look at your own actions. Because at that moment that you are defending yourself, you are usually defending your own fear of being perceived as something that you actually believe inside yourself is true anyway. So, in other words, somebody says to you, oh, you know, um, you know when you did that, you had a bad intention. You wanted to, you wanted to hurt me. You wanted to punish me. You, you know, and they're saying all these different things to you. You could then go on, okay, you could go into two places here. You could either go, on, oh, maybe I did want to punish them. Maybe I did want to punish them. Or you could go into this place of, no, I didn't want to punish you. No, I didn't want to punish you. You know, that you could go one of those two ways generally. And in the end, both directions are generally a denial of what I'm afraid of in my own causal emotion. If I allow myself to feel like, right, they're saying to me that I wanted to hurt them, I don't feel like I wanted to hurt them, but that makes me feel terrible for some reason. Their accusation that I wanted to hurt them makes me just feel terrible. So what grief inside of myself am I resisting about myself? There's something inside of myself about myself I'm resisting. And what could that be? Well, it could be that I actually feel the terrible emotion about having harmed others in the past, a, t a terrible guilt that I carry with me. You know, something when I was three might have happened. Like, like I remember um, one of my boys once when he, was, when he was about three, he got a little budgie that we had as a pet budgie and crushed the head of the budgie in a window, right, because he wanted to see what would happen. Right? Now... When he saw the budgie die in his own hand, what do you think he felt then? Just he felt terrible and he went into almost total shutdown for quite a number of days. He wouldn't feel anything. He just stayed in his room. He was only a few years old and stayed in his room and just wouldn't feel anything. You try to talk to him about it, he wouldn't talk about it. And then eventually after talking about it, he got to the point where he could grieve the fact that he did it. Does that make sense? And he eventually let go of all this guilt and sadness and how could I even done, have done that? Now, in our own past, many of, many of us have had these situations where we have done something unwittingly that created harm to somebody else. And then we carry, because these emotions are still within us, we carry them around and we, and we don't release them. And so when anybody then projects at us that we've harmed them, how do we react? Straight away we're up in arms, you know, like as if we're guilty for that particular thing as well. And we're guilty for that because we have this terrible feeling inside that we are. The key is to just allow ourselves to feel the terrible feeling inside that we are in that moment. But most of us don't do that. We, can, we go into defence. No, I wasn't harming you. I didn't try to harm you. And we go into panic and we try to like say, no, no, it's not like that at all. You know, please believe me. And we're saying all these things. But in reality we're not allowing the belief about ourselves that has still unhealed from our childhood to just pop up in that moment. Does that make sense? And when we do, it might be linked to an event just like I described, where we did do some harm to something and it had pain and we didn't realise and now we do and, and we had all this guilt and other emotions associated with it but we just don't release it. Right. So look at how I see myself. Ask yourself that question every time something happens that you want to defend. Hmm? Now, does that get now all this comes back to that question you asked, Barb, about why am I stuck? What, you know, when I feel down about myself. And that is, if, if we can stop trying to get at this, see, many of us, we're always trying to get here, right? Would that be right? We're always wanting to get to the causal emotion once we start getting on the path. 
But you know, most of the time, the causal emotion will just pop up on its own if we get to this. You see? So most of us don't want to get to that. We want to skip over that. Fear doesn't feel very good. So we want to skip over that and get to that. Does that make sense? But the problem is, is that that is what's creating everything above, the anger and the resistance and all the other things that we're feeling at the moment. It's actually this fear that we have that's creating that. And if I'm a male, sometimes it's very, very difficult to admit to myself that I'm even afraid of anything, let alone an emotion. right? And if I'm um, a female, often I'll admit that I'm afraid, but I'll live in the fear of it where I just perpetuate the fear in my life. Right? So, so a lot of times we need to stop avoiding these fears and terrors that we have. So rather than trying to get to the core emotion, the best thing to do is this. If I'm not feeling the core emotion right now, it's because I'm afraid of it. It's quite simple. If I'm not feeling it right now, I'm afraid of it. At some level, I don't want to feel it. I'm afraid of it. And if I'm afraid of it, then what do I need to start addressing? What am I afraid of? Now, it might be I'm afraid that other people will notice and I'm afraid of their judgment. I might be afraid of my own judgment of myself. I might be afraid of change. I might be afraid of admitting, wow, i am actually got some sexual addictions or I've got some physical addictions or I've got some emotional addictions that really, once I start acknowledging them, feel pretty like, wow, I'm not a very nice person at all. So that, you know, there's some judgments in there that I'm afraid of. And all I need to do in the end is allow myself to f release these fears and terrors that I have and the underlying emotion is just going to pop out of me, just like a child. Isn't that how a child works? Until you instill fear in the child, the child can feel its causal emotion straight away, can't it? As soon as you start putting fear layers or blockage layers on, or judgment layers on top of the child, what does the child now do? It can't feel its emotion anymore. This is what we've done. This is what's happened to us. So allow yourself to feel the fears if you're in a block state rather than trying to always get to the causal emotion. 